Adolf Hitler and Nazism are often portrayed as an apocalyptic and seismic break with European history. Yet the truth is that both Hitler and Nazism were the culmination and reification of European and American history in the 19th century. Europe's and the United States' annals of colonialism have prepared it for the range of phenomena associated with the Nazi regime. Industrial-scale murder, racial theories, slave labor, forcible annexation of territory, these were European and American phenomena, not invented by the Nazis. Germany was a colonial power, no different to murderous Belgium or Britain or the United States. What set Nazi Germany apart is that it directed its colonial attention at the heartland of Europe, rather than at Africa or Asia or Latin and Central America. Both world wars were colonial wars, fought on European soil. Moreover, Nazi Germany innovated by applying prevailing racial theories, theories which usually apply to non-whites, to the white race itself. They applied racial theories to the Jews, who were by and large white, and that was a non-controversial proposition. But then the Nazis expanded it, their racial theories to, to include East European whites, such as the Poles and the Russians. Still, Hitler was a right failure of his wager, that the British Empire will side with him against the equally murderous Bolshevist Stalin. Hitler and Stalin were two of a kind, mass murderers, bent on an expansionist imperialist agenda, promoters of ideologies that placed the state way ahead of individual life and freedoms. It made eminent sense for the Western powers to leverage Germany to get rid of communism and prevent the rise of a lamentable and vile Stalinist empire at the very heart of Europe. The peoples of Central and Eastern Europe have paid with four lost decades for the West's erroneous choice of Stalin over Hitler. In hindsight, allowing Hitler and Stalin to decimate each other would have been far preferable than supporting one of them. Even more so since Germany was not alone in its malignant nationalism. The far right in France was as pernicious as Nazism. Nazism and Fascism were world ideologies adopted enthusiastically in places as diverse as Iraq, Egypt, Norway, Latin America, and Britain itself. At the end of the 1930s, liberal capitalism, communism and fascism and its mutations were locked in mortal battle of ideologies. Hitler's mistake was to delusionally believe in the affinity between capitalism and Nazism, an affinity enhanced to his mind by Germany's corporatism, by the existence of a common enemy, global communism. Colonialism always had discernible religious overtones, often collaborated with missionary religion. The white man's burden of civilizing the savages was widely perceived as ordained by God, or American exceptionalism. The church was the extension of the colonial powers' army and trading companies. It is no wonder that Hitler's Lebensraum uh, colonial movement, Nazism, possessed all the hallmarks of ins institutional religion. It had priesthood, it had rites, rituals, temples, worship, catechism, mythology, and a Jesus figure, Hitler. Hitler was his religion's, uh, this religion's ascetic saint. He monastically denied himself earthly pleasures, or so he claimed, in order to be able to dedicate himself fully to his calling. Hitler was a monstrously inverted Jesus, sacrificing his life and denying himself so that Aryan humanity could benefit. By surpassing and suppressing his humanity, Hitler became a distorted version of Nietzsche's Superman.